55, Roger, a legend himself, looking for win number 12. And here the 43-year-old gets Jason Worth. He had five Ks in the day. Jeff Weaver seeking his 13th win. you got to think Yankee fans are thinking, boy, it would have been good to have him on our squad. 10 Ks on the day, first time he's hit double digits. Top seven, still scoreless. Craig Biggio pinch hitting for Clemens. Jeff Weaver appears to hit him. Doug Eddings says, nice try, but no. Biggio's angry, has some words with Eddings. Next pitch, he flies out to right. And after the flyout, Biggio, who is nothing if not a bulldog, is going to continue the argument. And for his chit chat, he will earn the gate. So Gardner, the skipper, gets the gate as well. Two for the price of one. Bottom eight, still scoreless. Oscar Robles, single, scoring Jason Repco from second. The Dodgers win one to nothing. Roger Clemens undone again by a lack of support. The eighth time in 26 starts, they've been shut out when he's pitched. The fifth time, they've lost a one nothing game. The 16th time, they've been shut out this year. 1968, known as the year of the pitcher. Mound higher, batting averages were much lower, etc. Since then, only three pitchers have received no run support in eight starts in a single season. Clemens, the first. It's Randy Jones and his ultra perm of the Black <laughs> The yellow 74. uniform. And oh, oh yeah. yeah. Nice. Marlins, Cubbies, Florida in position for the Wrigley Field sweep. Brian Sandberg, Day retired the Hall of Famer's jersey, number 23, enshrined earlier this month. Bottom first, no score, score. Derek Lee, hitless his last two games, cranks his 200th career homer, 38th of the year, breaks Ernie Banks' record for most homers by a Cubs first baseman. Bottom seven, Cubs up 4-3, Carlos Zambrano, the pitcher, digging it. Smashes it down the right field line, look at him go. That's an athlete. There, oh yeah. All right, so the win's against him, but he is going to leg out his second triple year, which ties him for the NL lead among pitchers. Drove it around with him. Still in the seventh base is Chuck Henry Blanco. He's going to stay in the park, but he's going to do some damage. Clears the bases. Cubs score eight runs in the seventh. They're up 11 to three when Derek Lee says, I will have a little bit more. His 39th. Cubs in a blowout, 14 to three. Marlins center Josh Beckett, 0-3 ERA, and nearly eight all-time at Wrigley. He's the anti Dontrell Willis. Phillies trying to hang on to the wild card lead, trying to dance their way into the postseason. Top second, no score. Ryan Howard, and oh goodness gracious, we'll bust out the handy dandy tape measure. That's four and a quarter, and the Phillies lead Bob Marley one love. Bottom three, scoring out tied at deuces. Bases loaded for Sean Green, just back from the birth of his second daughter, and holla. He was one for ten with the bases loaded this year, but this is his ninth career grand slam. Diamondbacks take the lead, and they go on to cruise to a 10-5 win. Giants into the Mets' five-game road win streak Saturday. Pitched them down again on Sunday. Scoreless in the fifth. Runner on second, Omar Vizquel. Soft to center. Carlos Beltran there gets Chris Benson and out. Beltran then on third in the sixth. Wild pitch gets away. Beltran will score from third. Well, Lowry's first wild pitch of the season, but it puts the Mets on the board. one nothing. Still in the sixth, Lowry going to beat himself out of this thing. Ramon Castro goes down swinging. And then Kaz Matsui deep to the hole, and guess who's there? That's pretty much what Omar Vizquel does. For a while, yeah. Yeah, he feels he makes out. Bottom six, we're tied at one after J.T. Snow home run. Benson to Pedro Feliz. That's a home run, too. We're untied. Two-run shot. Feliz is 19th. Johnson can go on to win this thing 4-1. to one. They took two of three from the Mets. Lowry's fifth straight. 2-0 and in his last seven games against KC. Top second, Yanks lead 2-0. Lider gets Terrence Long with Uncle Charlie. And then Posada, all two fingers. Here comes the deuce again on Hel Perroa. Powerless to do anything against it. Next batter, Lider. There's some Chez Whiz to John <laughs> Buck. Six innings pitch, two hits, six Ks, and then Giambi. That's the barrel of the bat. Jason barrels one right there. The law fans for him busts up an 0-for-21 slump with his 22nd homer, 1,000th career RBI. Then, in the fifth, let's have some more. This is an upper deck job. His 23rd, Yanks lead 7-1 career hit, number 1,500 for Giambi. He's not done yet. Come on out. The that's, Giambino. That's just the curtain call. He came out again to hit, I mean. Derek Jeter, Hideki Matsui are going to score on this single. Giambi, 3-for-3 three three and 7 ribeye stakes on the day. Yanks win a 10-3. So you got Giambi with two jacks and seven ribs. That's equaling his entire output in the two categories for the entire month of August. Derek Jeter, three knocks, eight-game hit streak. Lighter, excellent. 
37 runs, 53 hits the first two games between Boston and Detroit. And based on David Wells' ERA and day games, you thought that maybe the hits would just keep on coming, but no. Craig Monroe with a bid for extra bases. Bill Miller, a fantastic play, and then a great throw. Wells loving the D. And then in the bottom of that same frame, Miller again. He takes Nate Robertson out to left. A home run, one of his three knocks. He's got an 11-game hit streak, and the Sox lead 4-2. Top five, two outs. It's a skinny one-run lead, and Wells drops the hammer there. He got seven Ks on the day. Bottom eight, David Ortiz. I love it when you call me Big Pop Beach. His 33rd of the year, a two-run shot. Sox lead 11-3, win by the same score. And it's not just the 33 homers. Ortiz, three RBIs, tie with Manny for a league-best 115. Before Sunday, Matt Clement, the only Boston pitcher to work seven innings or more the past 14 games. Sox, by the way, 14 and 19 at home. Red Sox remain a half, a game and a half up in the American League East. They stay at home to host those suddenly surging D-Rays for four games while Los Junkies head out west for a seven-game west side visit. Four in Seattle and then three in Oakland. The Angels in first, but Aubrey Huff said this is our playoffs and the Devil Rays are swinging hot bats and playing good baseball. Huff's 19th homer of the year, 11 and 35 RBI since the breaks. D-Rays up 2-0. Benji Molina at the plate, top four. Fly ball to left center. Damon Holland scoops it off his shoot tops there by the track. Great grab. Bottom six, Tampa Bay up 2-1. Eduardo Perez at the plate. Four, six, three, double play. One more look. Cabrera jumps over Jorge Cantu. Perez is out at first. Great play by Cabrera. Top eight. Joe Borowski pitching, facing Orlando Cabrera. Tying run at third. Great snag by Perez. That's it, and that's all. Tampa Bay, they go on a 9-4 homestand, their best ever. They're 27-15 since the break, and this is their first series win versus the Angels since 2000. Devil Rays playing the role of spoilers. Two weeks ago Sunday, they completed a three-game sweep of the Indians, who were fighting for the wild card. Their very next series, those pesky D-Rays took two out of three from the Yankees. The Yankees, of course, in the thick of not one, but two different playoff races. And then, as you saw, this weekend, they sweep the Angels potentially out of first place in the American League West. We'll get to that in just a second. First, those Devil Rays, they're not going to make the playoffs, but they might have a say in who gets there. Playing very well lately, especially against good teams. They've got seven more with the Sox, six with the Yankees. They're nine and four against them. Three with the Angels, three with the Indians, and they're eight and five combined versus those teams. Ah, uh, yes, the AOS lead. The A's for the taking, if they can handle Baltimore. Five Baltimore pitchers with control problems. They had 11 walks total. Starter John Main at three. Chris Ray had two, although one was intentional. Jorge Julio at two. Tim Burdick, three. Todd Williams had one. You know, ball four, take your base, free pass, walk bases on ball. Five walks in the seventh inning alone, and I can tell you, guaranteed their Camden yards. Home plate does not move. It, it's right there. 60 feet, six inches from the rubber. Sometimes you just can't get the ball over it. That's how the game happens. Although pitching, it's not the biggest problem. Well, it was the biggest problem. Defense just didn't help. Top seven, six to eight. Bobby Kilty, chopper third. Melvin Moore makes a great stop. Tries to check the runner, then just whips it, uh, whips it away. Two runs will score on the air, and the A's are going to win this thing eight to two. Other offense came from Scott Hatterberg. Three hits, his first homer since July 30th, his first RBI in 26 days. The A's 5-1 and one in their 10-game roadie, including five wins in a row. So the A's trailed by three and a half games. On first start for the Nats, Albert Pujols on first and the top of the first, tries to steal second. Alama picks him off in a pickle, and Paul Nart calls him out. Replay, 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 replay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Pujols argues he was safe. Inning over. Pujols comes out for the bottom of the first. Still yapping, this time with Larry Poncino. And he gets the gate for the second time this year. The other time he got run by C.B. Buckner. Tony La Russa had his man's back, but he's got to go to Pujols. Einar Diaz replaces him at first. Only his third career appearance at first base. So maybe he's a little unfamiliar with the territory. Chopper here, and Einar is going over there, and Mark Grezelanek collides, and well, that's, that's no good at all. Maybe Diaz is ranging a little bit too far in the second base territory, but it doesn't matter because the Nats don't score because they can't. Top of the sixth, we got a delayed double steal, and here comes Jimmy Edmonds home. He beats the throw from Jamie Carroll. Hurt his knee, left the game, but does expect to play Monday in Florida. Nats are shut out in back-to-back -back games. They just can't score. So, 
you're keeping track of your National League wild card, well, all this drama and taking the season series from the Braves and still have it. Andrew Jones, the first Brave center fielder with 40 home runs since the hammer in 62. And actually, let's cue the trouble funk and let's get small. That ball is crushed. His 41st, the Braves take a 3-1 lead. It's 4-1, and Andrew has done it again. The rest of the Braves line up with two for 27, but that's all right because they got Andrew Jones, and he also has National League leading 102 RBI. Tim Hudson, you give him in a four-run lead. He's 83 and four lifetime, and here he gets Bill Hall to pop out to end the game, and he has got back-to-back -back complete game wins. Huddy's starting to look dialed in as the playoffs near. And if you're talking about a National League MVP, there's three names. Jones, Lee, and Pujols. And once again, a comfortable lead in the AL Central. And Freddie Garcia, welcome back to Safeco for the first time in a different jersey. And welcome rudely, although here he gets Richie Sexton. Sexton out of the game with blurred vision in his right eye. Dave Hansen apparently was seeing the ball like a beach ball. Bottom of second, it's 4-1 Mariners. Hansen, a shot off the glove of the second baseman in the right field. Each hero scores 5-1. Bottom, 5. It's Hanson again, and if you don't know, now you know. This ball is just pounded. His second of the year. Garcia leaves after four and a third. 11 hits, 8 earned. He said it was a nice day for Cleveland. Top first, Grady Sizemore's down there at third, and look at that. Greg Zahn picks him off after that sizable lead. Well, you know, they were keeping an eye on him because Friday night, Sizemore was down there at third again. He just took off a runner. Didn't wait for the guy to hit it or nothing. He just stole home. Oh, my goodness. Back to Sunday's game. Bottom seven, four, one Indians. Huge inning for Ronnie Belliard. Let's just let his defense sort of wash over you. Ray Johnson. No. Feels the pain from the second base. Wow. Excellent. Now, Alex Rios. Look who's there again. And then later in the inning, Vernon Wells. Oh, boy. You know, at some point, the scouting report is going to say, don't hit it to Ronnie. He made all three outs from the seventh. Indians win it 4 1. The Twins need Cy Santana to stay hot to make the playoffs for the fourth straight year, and I think that would qualify as hot. One earned the last 25 and a third, and the major league leader in strikeouts adds to it here. In the second, he gets Alfonso Soriano. Same inning, Mark DeRosa. No shot, the off-speed off -speed breaking ball. Chris Young, though, was his equal for the Rangers. Big fella, used to be a cager for Princeton. Here he gets Michael Ryan to get out of a jam, and then he gets Justin Morneau. Young had six Ks and seven and a third and left with a lead, but the bullpen couldn't hold it. But here we come, bottom nine. Rod Barajas at the plate. Catcher's interference by Joe Maurer on the swing. That loads the bases, and that brings up Hank Blaylock, a.k.a. Johnny Drama. It's a number, but it leads to... Break the lead! And the Rangers win it 2-1. to one. So what's it all mean, John? I'll tell you what it means. It means the Yankees have a half-game lead in the wild card over the Angels. The Indians just a game back, and they return home to Jacobs Field to take on the Tigers. The Tribe, though, just a game over 500. And Griffey Jr., 533 career homes. One shy of Jimmy Fox, two X's for 13th all-time. Top four, Griffey launches one off Kip Wells. How about Griffey? 33 homers, 90 ribbies. He's hitting 302. The man's playing like a stud. Helps to be healthy. Reds go on to win this thing 7-2. Junior, good player. JR, though, not taking that hot bat to the south side of Chicago, telling the Dayton Daily News, quote, I'm not going to Chicago. The same paper reported that the Sox did call the Reds last week about Griffey and even offered to take on more of Griffey Jr.'s salary, but were refused. Petco, top of the second, Chew Freeman at the dish. And this is a, always a frightening moment. We saw a horrifying collision out here earlier this year. This is not nearly as bad, but it's Dave Roberts and Brian Giles colliding. They knock knees, bruise right knee for Brian Giles. More on that in just a moment. Bottom five, we're tied at two. Xavier Nady, who came in for Giles. Hit by a pitch, bases loaded. Next batter is Ryan Klesko, and Klesko delivers the go-ahead two-run single. The Padres up 4-2. to two. They win 4-3. Jeremy Schatt now with more on frightening, frightening baseball collisions. All right, then. Bring me your top plays. Top 10 plays of the week. Number 10, A's Orioles. 
Bo's had a hard time of it against Oakland. B.J. Suroff, a little fly ball over to the left field. Look at Eric Chavez at third, covering ground, makes the backhand stab. You see it one more time, and then, well, how about that? Backhand one, two, three outs. So we, we move on to the next play. Number nine, your U.S. Amateur Championship. Sunday famed Marion, bring me that wicker basket and bring me the U.S. Amateur Championship. Eduardo Marlinari for birdie on the 33rd hole. He wins the Amateur Championship four and three. Number eight, Twins Rangers, Nick Punto, liner to third, Hank Blaylock. Look at the former driller. Good pick. Dips up, makes the throw across the diamond. Guy's got a mean stick, but here doing good work on the defensive side of the ball. Up quick to the feet, and then you, it's nothing unless you make that throw. Number seven, Cards Nats on Saturday, and little David Eckstein, he shows bunt, then pulls the bat back and slaps it out of the yard. RFK, it's impossible to hit home runs there. Bunt, no, no, none of that. Yeah, have some breaks out the big bat two run shot to left field number six Indians Blue Jays Grady Sizemore third he's going here comes the steal of home and he's in there how about that Sizemore steals home what a great that's a great play this is a great play Owensboro Kentucky Nick Finnecaro oh, an unbelievable oh. backhander Luke Doherty snares it check out Luke yeah. I got gotcha. you. That's against Westbrook, Maine. An unbelievable play. Love the youngsters, especially when they're smiling. Number four, Bengals Eagles. First play from scrimmage Friday night. Don McNabb. There's Terrell Owens in the preseason debut. 64 <laughs> yard scoring strike all's well, right? Owens caught five passes, 131 yards in his first game. Discuss. Number three, and how about three plays from the same Tuesday game, White Sox Twins? Paul Canerco bidding for extra bases. Shannon Stewart's having none of that. Sixth inning, Nick Punto a drive to deep right. Jermaine died. He's on the wall, into the wall. He's got the ball. Same game, Pablo Azuna deep. Center, Lou Ford. He might not be Torrey Hunter, but Lou Ford, the little guy, has been selling out in center field all year in his stead. And the little fella. Number two Royals, the Yankees, Jorge Posada, David to Jesus, and you know when you're the Royals, you find sort of encouragement, you find the good where you can, and that is an excellent leaping catch to Rob Posada. Number one in the hood, Jay Little League style. Bottom of the seventh, extra innings, drive. 